wanted to talk today about uh, the time skew, and it's mostly going to be kind of an overview on rebuttals. You've been getting already some more specific rebuttal information this morning, and you'll get more rebuttal information tomorrow. Um, the time skew, though, I don't necessarily mean talking about time skew impacts, like to a tea debate or something like that. That's not what this lecture is going to be about. So if that's what you thought it was going to be about, and you don't want to learn about any other kind of time skew, you can just leave. <laughs> <laughs> that's a dumb impact, anyway. I want to talk about taking advantage of the time skew, or how to prevent being taken advantage of because of the time skew. That's what I want to talk about. Um, how the rebuttals and the times of the speeches are structured so that if you are negative, how to take advantage of it. If you are affirmative, how not to get bent over and taken advantage of. Because <laughs> most debates, if you really sat down and thought about where it was lost, it is lost because either the negative didn't collapse and didn't take advantage of the time skew, or the affirmative got spread out because the negative did take advantage of the time skew in certain ways. And there are ways, those things might sound like they're in conflict, but they're not because there's ways to do it right and ways to do it wrong. And we'll talk about that today. We're going to talk about what the app's job is kind of first and then go back to the next. So hopefully that will make sense uh, as we go forward. The app has two time skews to deal with. And I'm going to move around. So I don't know, Nick, if you want to be on camera or not. But and like, it. The, it. <laughs> it <doesn't. laughs> the first time, yeah, everyone all over the country when this goes up on YouTube is going to be on Coffee at Lab 1. Password is evidence. Look at it. <laughs> the first time skew that the app has to deal with is, doesn't look like it's that bad. It's the seven minute negative, so this is the one I see. And then the six minute is obviously the one I see. So the app is already the first time the app speaks functionally in a bear. Yeah, they read their 1AC, but they're not really making arguments in that speech that is off the top of their head. They're not responding to anything. They've got a prepared argument. It's their 1AC. The first time that the app does really <coughs> work in the debate is in the 1AR, and they're already behind when they get there. Like if you, so for instance, you can't have a one-to-one -one ratio in responses. You can't spend, if they spend one minute on a T, you can't spend one minute on the T2, and, and then keep that ratio up. Because if you do that, you'll be a minute behind at the end, right? You, there'll be a minute worth of stuff that you haven't answered. So at some point in the debate, in that speech, you have to make up exactly one minute. The more time that you make up, the more offense you can probably run for yourself if you're affirmative. But also, you need to be careful because you don't want to undercover the negative arguments just to gain yourself extra time. Like that doesn't really do much for you if you're undercovering their arguments at the same time. So as the affirmative, you have to make up that one minute of time. The other time in the debate is the much more pronounced one. And that's the 6-3 ratio that happens at the end of the debate, where the 1 and R happens, and then the 2 AR follows. So that's what this lecture is about, is when you're in the negative, how do you capitalize on having that advantage? Because really, in terms of who wins the actual debate and the nitty gritty of the debate, unless you do a very good job at taking advantage of the offense that you buried in your 1AC, the speech doesn't really matter that much in terms of winning the debate. It is these speeches where you win the debate if you're the affirmative and where you win the debate if you're the negative. It's a whole other topic altogether to talk about how to take advantage of the one use advantage of the hybrid 1AI and the smooth 1AC, how to take advantage of your constructive to be ahead in these debates and these speeches. But that's a whole other topic. And I'll, I'll mention some of those strategies in this to kind of service to that. But this is really going to be more about what you can do in the rebuttals. <coughs> the first thing, if you're the affirmative, to really think about and to always have, and it's going to, we'll, we'll use this word a lot, and that's just to be efficient. You have, you all, in both of those speech, in both of those ratios, you have to be more efficient than your opponent. You have to make up that time. Some people make up time by picking an issue to undercover because they don't think the impacts are big enough, or they don't think that the other debater understands the argument very well, or they think it wasn't presented in a very like persuasive manner, so they're not that really worried about the judge voting on it, and that's where they'll make up the time. That's dangerous. That's more dangerous than just being efficient. That's probably a better strategy to cover everything equally and everything just as well, and just be efficient at it. Um, you can do lots of things to be more efficient. You can do drills that force yourself to 
you could redo speeches from previous rounds when you have the flow just a few days after you get back from the tournament. You don't want to wait too long. You don't want it to get stale. And you can give your one AR again, but give yourself only five minutes to cover those seven minutes. And then do it again and give yourself four minutes to cover the same arguments you made in five. Right? And just keep knocking time off your speeches until you can't physically answer it in that amount of time anymore. And you should try not to get in the time limit by speeding. You should try getting in the time limit by being, what did I say that was extraneous? What did I say was not important to the resolution of that issue, to my answer and strategy against that argument? What did I say that wasn't important? What did I say that was only defensive and not terminal defense? against arguments, get rid of those things first. And then you can, obviously you're gonna have to speed up a little bit too, like you're trying to cut off a big, a whole minute. And in the beginning, you won't be able to go from six to five. Go from six to five thirty. try to cut out 30 seconds of your speech. And just like do speech redos. But rather than redoing your speech, you're actually forcing yourself to get it in a shorter amount of time. And that'll teach you to be more efficient. And when you get up in a debate round and have to enter and have to answer a seven minute one, eight, one NC, it's gonna sound easy. It's gonna be like you have all the time in the world. Because in practice, you're used to giving four minute one ARs or five minute one ARs or whatever you can really push yourself, push, your, push yourself to get it done in less time. And that's, you don't even have to have a coach around to do that. This stuff you can do on your own, just like make yourself better. It's stuff that in your dorm room or in a space in the library or study, study room somewhere, you can just like force yourself to stand up and re-give those speeches and try to make the arguments you need to make to get it in a shorter time and make yourself more efficient. Um, you can do a lot of things like speed reading drills and speed drills that just make you a better reader so you're not losing time reading evidence. Uh, a lot of people have said, and uh, Tom Shally also has said, that he hates it when he reads cards in the 1AR. It feels like he's losing time. He just doesn't like doing it. Um, he thinks it's dumb to read cards in rebuttals. I don't entirely agree with that. I don't think he's reading a lot of cards. That's for sure. You know, that's the one way to not be very efficient. But when you do, you want to be a good reader. You want to have good diction. You want to be really clear. You don't want to be stumbling over your own words. Um, and that's just true of your line by line responses, too. If you have front lines <coughs> against a tough Cali argument that is like 10 analytical responses, you can practice reading those. You can do the same drills with analytics that are pre-written than you can with a piece of evidence. Um, some of those drills are like putting the consonant uh, A in between every word, just saying like reading a card and saying the letter A in between every word, or reading a card backwards as fast as you can, or uh, not reading the word the, like read a card but don't ever say the word the. Just skip it and force yourself to skip it. And every time you say the word the by accident, start over again. Um, and so there, there, are, and you can talk to your coaches about more of those, or you can go online. There's lots of places online where they talk about what different speed reading drills are. But it's just another way to make yourself more efficient. Um, so that's the first thing: is just be more efficient. And I, I really, I personally really like the drill where you cut time off your speech and make yourself redo it in a shorter amount of time. I think that when I was a debater and forced myself to do those, that was one of the biggest ways that I would find myself improving my coverage uh, was doing those kind of things. Um, I try to make my debaters do it, and I don't know if they do it, probably not, but uh, it's, that's up to you. It's up to you to decide to do those things. Um, the other thing you should do while you're affirmative is you need to be acutely, acutely aware how much time your opponent is spending on every argument they make. And that's not easy to do. Like You have to become a very good multitasker to not only pull files from your box as they make arguments, write analytical responses as you're flowing their responses. Flow, you should probably be flowing too, like that's the other thing you're doing. And then the fourth thing I think is watching time their speech yourself, maybe hopefully counting up if your timer does so it doesn't beep at the end annoyingly. Um, some, and some judges get annoyed at that, so you wanna be careful with that. Um, or at least if it is counting down, try to stop it when there's one second left so it doesn't just go crazy at the same time everyone else's timer does. Or take your, uh, some people take the sound unit out of their timers. If you know anyone who's like an electrical engineer, just have them like take the speaker out of your timer, which we've, I've done that before with some timers. Um, and just watch and see how much time they spend. Like if they spend three and a half minutes reading a disad shell, you should be aware of that. If they're spending 35 seconds reading a topicality, you should be aware of that. If they spent a minute 15 reading a convoluted FX T shell, or two and a half minutes if they're Central Michigan reading a long extra T shell that has like 17 <laughs> violations and 12 definitions and 13 standards, like, you need to be aware of that. You need to know how much time they had um, to do that. Because your knowledge of those situations will help you decide in prep time where the best place to make up your time is. Make up the minute that you're losing, like you don't get that minute. They get it, you don't. You have to make it up somewhere. 